Today's session is on autonomous driving, which has become quite the hot topic of discussion recently in the automotive industry. We've seen a lot of car makers in the market like Tesla, Audi, BMW, et cetera, and even Google has tested its first driverless um, automobile on public streets, which is very exciting. And Apple considers their car to be the ultimate mobile device. We're very excited to have one of our leading experts in the area, Dr. James Zeng, Senior Professor and Lecturer in Software Engineering, giving us a presentation to start um, and sharing industry insights with us. So thank you so much for joining us and I'll pass over to you. And um, uh, today I, I'm, I'm honored to uh, give a talk about autonomous driving system um, from system perspective, modeling and uh, engineering. And next slide. Yeah, mainly uh, four parts. First is about system perspective. What are the fundamental and the challenges uh, right now faced by autonomous driving uh, industry perspective? And then I'll talk about two engineering perspectives, one from security and then from software, software engineering. And in the middle, I'll talk about modeling, um, mainly in terms of the distributed intelligence. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, uh, as I said uh, before, autonomous driving is uh, interdisciplinary. It covers system, uh, security, software engineering, and, uh, and AI, machine learning. It also is actually close collaborated and um, um, intersected with uh, um, automotive engineering. Uh, we've been giving uh, many talks in industry, mainly uh, like uh, um, um, Baidu Apollo and GD, which bought the uh, Volvo a few years ago. Um, every time I ask about what car is, uh, autonomous vehicle is, uh, we, our response is actually vehicle becomes computers. It's a portable computers with um, batteries uh, inside. And uh, this paradigm, uh, paradigm shift to autonomous driving, you can see um, ubiquitous uh, everywhere as our in host uh, introduced before. Uh, it's uh, into the V2 uh, vehicle, uh, vehicle to I infrastructure, which is the low side units and um, traffic lights. Um, and the vehicle to society, or vehicle becomes a part of society. Next slide, please. Um, in terms of autonomous uh, vehicle, it has some levels. Um, it's actually five levels. Um, it's actually made um, by the US Department of Transportation. Uh, it mainly um, determined, auton autonomous level mainly determined by three factors. First is steering, second throttle and braking. Uh, Tesla car is mainly like level, level three. So in the highway, it can be fully autonomous. And so have some problem we'll cover later. Uh, level four is the majority of time is actually autonomous, but in some uh, very bad weather conditions like a heavy fog, it has to resort back to manual uh, driving. Level five is a bit scary. It's actually step into a car like a, a Waymo in uh, San Francisco area and the Bay uh, area. Uh, basically, you don't have steering uh, uh, wheel anymore, no brakes, no throttle. So it's a uh, fully autonomous uh, mobility and um, um, containers. Next slide. Come with uh, uh, this kind of autonomy, we do have some challenges faced by industry. First is security. Um, in terms of uh, single vehicle um, and uh, wireless transmission can be replayed uh, and can be stolen in within 360 seconds. It's actually in, inside some papers already, security papers. And Tesla car has been hacked and basically the panel inside the car can be removed and uh, uh, malware can be planted into the car, the car in, inside the car. Uh, and uh, the BMW infotainment system has been hacked. Um, next slide. When it comes um, autonomous, is actually a more security vulnerability there. Uh, this is the um, 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 a recent result we made with Tsinghua University. Uh, from the um, bottom is actually the growth of autonomous uh, um, algorithms and models. Uh, you can see it's booming um, up to 2012, and it's mainly these uh, deep neural networks tricks has been found, and uh, GPUs and all these uh, big data set. But uh, on the top, uh, the orange is actually the attack. You can see more. Um, invention in the autonomous driving models and systems and more attacks can be, uh, can be exported. Uh, we will talk about this later. The next slide. Um, besides security um, issues, it also have reliability issues. Tesla car, we all know is actually, um, the, the boss of Tesla car is actually very um, emphasis on camera. So it's a purely camera based systems but they have this uh, crashing into uh, highway barriers. And Uber is, on the other hand, is multi-sensor fusion. They're using not only camera, but also using uh, uh, LiDAR and the radar 
they also experience similar crashing into a passing uh, uh, bicyclist. And Baidu Apollo is the one we had a, a close collaboration with. They deploy um, uh, thousands of level four autonomous vehicle in Changsha, which is one of the big city in China. It's like a 10 million people or something. Uh, they always resort to manual intervention because of a lot of complexity in the driving scenarios. Um, two years ago, I was giving a, like a, some called an expert talk in GD, which the company bought the Volvo. Uh, Julian talk, uh, it's, uh, it's a widely acknowledged uh, level five. It's too scary and for people to step into. So there's a lot of reliability issues. Um, um, next slide, please. So um, then I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, in Macquarie, uh, our research center, how we resolve these security reliability issues and how to um, um, create some models for aid the autonomous drivers. Next slide. So this is a typical uh, autonomous driving systems, what, what they have. You can see it's not a single, single system. It's a multi-module, multi-sensor system. You have multiple sensors. Uh, on the left-hand side, you have GPU, camera, LiDAR, radar. But also, it's not like a single, uh, uh, a single system. It has a perception. You have the path planning. You have the control. Uh, it's a lot of complexity inside. On the right is actually talk about this input and output, right, output. And the neuron, Active functions. So we will cover it extensively in our AI courses in Macquarie. Next slide. So, this is uh, first of all how they build this kind of uh, autonomous driving model. Um, NVIDIA, which company is very famous for graphic card, right now they create this kind of convolutional neural networks. Uh, what they do is actually they have camera data. Based on camera data, they can predict the steering angle. So the blue one is the true steering angle, which is the uh, Oracle and, and the human driver recorded. And the red one is the, and the prediction angle, predicted angle by these convolution neural networks. Um, next slide. Uh, we collaborate with uh, UCLA and, and Harvard uh, to um, think about how the um, current attack, which is called adverse attack, will impact these kind of driving models. Uh, in a nutshell, adverse attack is basically you have a, um, an original image which is cam uh, this Panda. Uh, you basically, um, you know, neural networks, it's a deep neural networks has cost functions. Cost functions usually uh, how to reduce the cost is by gradient descent. So you carry the gradients and you modulate the sign and add some uh, perturbation to the original input, you create noise. After you put this noise on top of the original images, it's, for the human eye, it's still Panda, but for the machine learning models, it's not Panda, it's Gibbon. And with 99% confidence, it is Gibbon. So it's, uh, it's very dangerous. But one, we want to see how this behavior will uh, reproduce can be can be reproduced in driving models. Uh, next right, next slide, please. Yeah, to investigate this one, we implement five kind of attack. And um, ITFGSM is the one I talked about before. It's but it's more iterative. It's actually pixel level um, perturbation for the uh, for the images to create this kind of noise. Uh, OPT is optimization based. It's basically the optimization target is the input. They want to um, generate a false prediction by minimizing uh, the perturbation on the on input. Uh, ADV GAN is famous one as a GAN, a generative adversary network. You basically have a generator and a discri uh, discriminator. Um, it's used widely right now in industry uh, to generate this kind of um, perturbation. Uh, and also OPT uni is actually uh, one noise on top of every single Im images. ADV GAN is actually generate a noises uh, for every single images. So it's a, a universal um, perturbations. Next slide. Besides these five attacks we implement, but also implement some defenses. And um, training, adverse training is basically you have adversary examples, you basically training the model again. Uh, defensive distillation is interesting um, because um, before the classification softmax or um, uh, regression, linear regression um, final layer, you have logits. For these logics, we actually divide this one by some temperature uh, as a variable. And the bigger temperature, you, you scale down uh, uh, the space where the, the attacker can manipulate the gradients. So we want to minimize this one to do defense and also have a normal detection and feature squeezing. Basically, um, defensive distillation is the models, model size, model wise, uh, gradient space and, and re reduction. So feature squeezing is the input space uh, reduction. Uh, next slide. 
what we, what we want to do is actually we want to increment um, to do three things. First of all, to check in a uh, real load images that you could record by camera, how strongly or robust the current Java model can perform. That's first thing. Second thing we want to see if we implement some attack like OPT uni, which is the one noise on, on every single load images without defense, how the joint model behave. The third one is interesting one. And this is a reason our work is published for this in system is uh, we implement best defense with the distribution at the temperature. But we also implement the best attack, which is for every single image we use again to generate noises. How the best defense and best attack work together? Can you play the video, please? So this is the normal situation uh, where the Java model is no attack uh, in the real camera recorded. Even in the shade, you can the prediction, which is the um, um, green line, is actually very close to the the, the red one, red one. So the robust Java model. But what if we give attack, very naive attack, let's say OPT uni. So for every single load image, we give a on um, top right corner one um, noise. You can see the steam angle is just far beyond reasonable. It's crashing. And then we ask the third question is we give the best defense or we give best attack. You see the images, the, the noises on the top right is changing. Every single load images frame have a, a, its own attack vectors, but you can see the best defense cannot defend it. So our conclusion is we need to do a lot of things to secure the Java models. Next slide. Next slide, please. Yeah, now I'll talk about from um, security and I'll talk about from the modeling perspective. Next slide, please. And uh, um, in, in terms of uh, software engineering and autonomous driving engine, uh, system engineering, we care really about in the real world setting, how we use machine learning, right? And uh, it's actually more like distributed learning. Each vehicle has its own machine learning models, how we can utilize this one. So each vehicle has its own model. They collect their data. They don't want to share data because data is private, right? And uh, how, uh, how we can utilize uh, in this scenario to uh, gain the best performance for each vehicle models where also uh, per, per, per protected the data privacy. Next slide. To do this, we actually think about this kind of opportunistic better learning where the vehicle is not stationary. They bump into each, each other opportunistically. And within this opportunistic encounter, how we can exchange information to make our model, individual model smarter. So we create some um, uh, uh, like a bootstrap model, which is the genetic model. And then they dispatch to each vehicle. And the data they collect by themselves, cloud source data. But the interesting thing is we want to address the data skewness. Each data collected from each e vehicle is different. And they, each one has a personalized object. Okay, next slide. So what we do is actually one vehicle or mobile devices. Like, uh, we put the simple, simplest way for this uh, paper. Um, when a device encounter, uh, the device we ask the encounter device, oh, what kind of the data distribution you have? And then the encounter device return back. If the distribution is interesting, I feel interesting in this distribution, I will give my model to you. You train the model with your local data and you pass me back, not the model, not the data, the gradient, okay? Uh, which is the, the parameter for the network. And with the parameter, update my models. So this is all the nutshell, happening in nutshell. We call it optimi optimistic error running. Next slide, please. Now we do some experiment we, with a lot of devices they encounter together. Uh, on the left hand is actually 300 encounter. On the right is 1,400 encounter with different devices. We create different kind of algorithm. The, uh, the last one called momentum is our algorithm. You can see the accuracy in two graphs is the best in the, 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 red, red, the red ones. Next slide. Not only that, but also we want to try in the real mobility patterns, right? In the real uh, um, devices moving patterns, we collect the real device and mobility, mobility data set and how, we, uh, how, how the, our algorithm works. And you can see even in the real data, mobility data, our, device, our algorithm works the best, which is the, the, and the red line on top. The next slide, please. With this one, we can do something interesting. Well, the, the one interesting thing is called driver fatigue detections. On the left-hand side is our initial uh, experiment, which is using the camera to detect uh, fatigue, you know, the eye blink, a yawning, and also the blood volume uh, uh, around the, uh, below the nose. 
the problem is actually in pandemic, you have wear, uh, masks and you have sunglasses. Okay, all the information lost. So on the right, we try this kind of SMG, which is the muscle electric uh, activities. We create the device ourselves, and we have the um, the the sensors ourselves, which is uh, put around the steering wheel. Next slide, please. And the uh, interesting thing is actually in engineering, we don't create one model, we create multiple, multiple models to do each individual things. We have a noise, a noise removing, and here a figure four is actually a kind of um, feature selection model. Uh, you want to select uh, some uh, very outstanding features to detect, uh, detect fatigue, and we're using some algorithm like a, a maximum spanning, but also valid. On the right hand side, the figure shows uh, what kind of feature we want is actually those uh, um, uh, uh, interesting fe uh, feature which shows the fatigue, fatigue drop and fatigue up. So these kind of up and down signals point out some kind of interesting features we can detect fatigue. Next slide. With uh, this, uh, lots of model together, we can do experiments. On the left hand side is the simulation environment. We ask the participants to play need for speed and we have the sensor attached to the steering wheel. On the right-hand side, we do the uh, real driving. We drive from Macquarie University all the way to Victoria, which is the lake's entrance. Nine hours drive, each person, and altogether four person, two vehicles. We put in the, the real vehicles, and, and the, the results is quite interesting, 90% detection accuracy. Next slide, please. So we talk about modeling. Last, we talk about some software engineering. Next slide, please. So we, once the model, we want to be robust, right? People can now step into level five because there's no steering wheel. How we give them the, the confidence is to test the driving model thoroughly. But the current testing practice is quite simple uh, because the driving model is very difficult. So we want to express some rules uh, to test this kind of just scenario, to export, to um, create those corner key scenario to test the vehicles. Next slide. So we use this called the BDD, which is behavior driven development, which is human languages to express traffic rules, right? Australia have traffic rules, USA have traffic rules. We use this BDD to express this one. And then we test on the cityscape, which is real data set. Next slide, please. And uh, we are uh, using three uh, state of our drawing models to test our um, behavior. So we're using this uh, human uh, traffic rules to express the, the, the uh, to generate the test cases. We want to see how many corner cases, how many failures we can find from the driving models. Second thing is whether the test case, which is the driving scenario we created is, a, um, is a genuine or not by human raters. Next slide, please. See, that's the test case we generate. On the top is the original test cases, which are road images. On the bottom is the test case we generate. We add the car, we add the bicycle, pedestrian, we change the uh, scene, scenery from day to night. We also um, change the scenery from day to rainy. And for this one, we all have traffic route mandate uh, what kind of driving behavior you should have. Next slide, please. By generating these test cases, right? And we can see in the five behavior, which is five rules for each model, by right, three driving model, Apple, the VG16, and the ResNet. We can find lots of lots of variation of the rules. This is really interesting, and giving the the, the automotive engineer a lot of thing to think why the driving model uh, will behave so badly in these driving scenarios. Next slide. Not only with that, but also we want the human raters to rate from zero to seven how truthfully, how genuine the general test cases of driving scenario is. And you can see majority of them are rate as from five to seven. And you can see from the previous slide, we have some like kind of ghost like uh, pedestrian. It's just because our um, uh, computer graphic um, generation and models are not that state of art. But if we change that one, um, the joining driving scenario will be all more truthful. Next slide. So our ongoing work is actually instead of using the BDD, we're using some kind of something more. Uh, expressible called ontology, using ontology to express more thoroughly the complex scenarios. Next slide. I will show you what kind of scenario we can picture. See, in this is the simulation, we test against the Baidu Apollo, which is like a Tesla. Um, 
we find the problem is actually by do Apollo 5.0 has problem. In the test scenario we constructed, they will collide with the passengers. And we report this problem to a, a competition, uh, international competition, as a second slide. We also found the problem uh, by do Apollo driving model, when they have a stop sign, they stop really good. But the after stop, they never start. So that's another problem we found for driving model. It's a real world driving model. And we report these um, bugs to the um, international comp competition as well. Yeah, I think this uh, final finalized my talk. There's a lot of, um, I want just, I want, to, I want just to emphasize there's a lot of interesting research and the teaching happening right now in Macquarie. And uh, please seriously consider to join us and uh, join our team. Thank you. Mute to Jane Zeng. Um, we will open up now to questions. We have had quite a few questions come through the chat bar. So thank you so much to everyone that is watching at home for sending through those questions. If any more have come up in the last few minutes, please do feel free to just keep on adding them um, into the chat. Like I said before, if we don't get to all of your questions by the time this webinar ends, you will get an email response. So don't worry, we will try and get to everyone. Um, so doctor, I will just ask you, where are we at in Australia for automated vehicles? Would you say we're ahead of other countries? Would you say we have something special up our sleeves? Where's Australia in this whole mix? Mm, that's very good question. Uh, I think Australian government uh, strongly encourage this kind of research. Personally, for me, I already got two ARC funding, uh, Australian Council funding. One is the linkage program, another discovery program. Um, the first one is look at the security, exactly the, the work is sponsored by the Australian government. The second one is the testing, which is the, the last bit I showed, how to detect the vulnerability on the driving models. I think Australian government is very serious to, for these autonomous uh, vehicle technologies. And I think, uh, personally, I think we are ahead of the majority of the world. I think we are in par with US, USA and Germany in this regard. That's really interesting to know. And it's good that we, we can see that we're also on par with, like you said, America and Germany. So in the coming years, when I'm sure autonomous driving becomes more popular and more well-known, then we'll be right up there with them, which is really interesting. Um, so That's another um, person on our Zoom has asked, they thanked you for your really informative presentation and asked if they're interested in this, can you kind of suggest where they would start learning? Would they go towards more of a data science degree, an engineering degree? Where could they go if they wanted to find more information on the topic? Mm, very good question. I think uh, it really depends, right? If you do the security engineering, as I said before, it's an interdisciplinary um, area. If you want to do security, you should go to cybersecurity. If you want to do this model, you should do this data science or AI. Uh, if you want to do the, the software engineering, which is testing, you should select the so uh, software engineering. But if you want to do all in together, like a broad spectrum, you should do IoT, Internet of Things. So we all have this kind of degree <laughs> available. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting how many different facets there are in the one topic. So it's good that students can pursue the, the route that they prefer, which is really great. So um, another student has had a little bit of a query because they do have some experience. They said that they're um, some data science and engineering background, but they aren't a research student. They're wanting to get into autonomous driving, but they're not sure if that could be a future career for them. Are any Australian company doing field work for it that they could use the data science and engineering backgrounds for? Yeah, this is also a very good question. And I'm, I'm not only doing the autonomous driving, I'm also doing UAV uh, uh, research. I think the reason I um, put the autonomous driving first is that autonomous driving is more difficult uh, because people in, inside the car, it can, and the UAV is uh, less uh, um, machine critical in the sense. Um, uh, if you're understanding those uh, research um, nutshells in autonomous driving, it will be a lot easier for you to do those um, intelligent system like uh, smart health, UAV, or even uh, logistics, other things. So this is a research, but whatever you learn here will be beneficial a lot for the genetic purposes. Awesome, and it's really cool that students can use that background and that interest that they already have, like you said, and apply it through um, the different programs that you offer, which is really exciting. So our next question kind of leads into that as well. Um, for the engineering programs at Macquarie, a student is really interested in them, but they're wondering if there are any practice-based or project-based learning experiences where while they're studying with us, they can really have that hands-on experience. 
Yeah, we do. We do have this kind of uh, mass level thesis. So you can do the thesis with us and, uh, and uh, basically our researchers will handheld you, uh, have a weekly meeting and give you this uh, feasible project, small project for you to work with. You also can work side by side with our PhD students uh, on that. This is one thing. Second thing is actually Macquarie has this kind of pathway building from the postgraduate first year after finish with uh, 75 um, mark, you can automatically transit into, or not automatically, you can apply to transit into a mass by research second year with a full scholarship support. And uh, this is a really good opportunity right now um, offering in Macquarie. Oh, that's amazing. And I think what sets Macquarie apart from other unis, um, a lot of current students would say is that support. So being able to work with those PhD students, like you said, um, that would really help mm -hmm. students get into the field and be able to talk to their colleagues that are studying similar things. So that's really exciting. Thank you for, for bringing up that really important point. Um, another student has um, had a bit of a query about autonomous cars and has said, how does autonomous cars change its behavior once the traffic rules change? What if the road rules change in the next year or so? Like a little lane becomes one way traffic when it used to be two, two way, sorry. Is there something that keeps the data really up to date? Is there something where autonomous cars are ahead and they know whether when the road um, rules are changing? Is there any information you can give us on that? Yeah, I was surprised how many good questions come up in these sessions. And that's exactly the reason I'm talking about the second one, which is called distributed intelligence. The reason we want this one is because each car um, can have its own vision of data. Second thing is actually rule is evolving. So this distributed intelligence model allows you to continue learning. So the, the data is evolving. Your model is continuing evolving with the data. And the, the mm -hmm. devices of a vehicle encountering can share the experiences they have. So um, I don't think uh, the driving model is actually you train and then deploy to the, to, to the vehicle and then you don't need to train again. I don't think that's the case. I think the model deployed to a vehicle will be continuously trained, continuously updated. That's and really again, interesting and it's good. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry, you continue. <laughs> No, no, I, I think that, that pretty much, uh, I want to just add the last thing is that no matter how rules change, how the, the scenario change, your machine learning model can always learn. And that's very interesting. I think a lot of people trying to get into the autonomous driving industry or just having an interest in it because it is so up and coming at the moment, um, really query about that because road rules change all the time. You know, they introduce new speed limits, new road rules, and it's really kind of comforting to know that this technology can keep up with that ever-changing world of driving and road rules. So that's very interesting. And I'm sure that's more than answered their question. Thank you very much. Um, we have one where kind of predicting for the future. Where do you see the future of auto driving in the next 10 years? Do you think everyone will have autonomous driving vehicles? Do you think the hype will have died down around them? If you could make a prediction, where do you think we'll be in the next 10 years? Hmm, that's also a very good question. I think this question is kind of answered by the Tesla boss. I'm not going to name his name, we all know him. Uh, I think he's too optimistic. He thinks it's uh, within two or three years, it can level five. And maybe he thinks it's uh, next year or something. Uh, I, I'm more uh, realistic. I think uh, it will take time. I think level four will be the, will be a, uh, coexist with us for four or five years at least. So human in the loop AI will be uh, heavily uh, prevalent in autonomous driving. So um, you will still have steering wheel and the user is sitting behind the steering wheel and uh, most of the time it's driving by itself, but sometimes we do need a human intervention and uh, the vehicle can learn from human behavior and a human can give a lot of uh, input to the vehicles. And then when all the testing ethics, um, legal issues being sorted out, then we can step really into the era of autonomous driving, which would be the level five. I think it will be five years later. Um, that's a more realistic view in, in, from my perspective. <laughs> that's very interesting. And I think, of course, because there are so many people like yourself who are very knowledgeable in the industry, seeing the kind of difference of opinion and I guess in time we'll see. And it's very interesting to see this kind of up and coming topic develop more. And who knows where it could be in 10, 15, 20 years. It's very exciting to kind of track the process. Um, so thank you for highlighting that and giving us your kind of two cents on the topic. 
Um, we have run out of time this afternoon on our webinar. So if you do have any additional questions, um, do just pop them in the chat and we will email you a response. But I would just like to thank Dr. Zen for all of your time. And on behalf of myself and our attendees, we really do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to answer all these questions and make that really informative presentation. So thank you again for joining us. And I hope that these questions kind of made you think about some, um, some more topics on um, auto autonomous driving. And I'm sure that we have a lot of really engaged students online that are really benefited. So thank you so much again. Um, at the end of the expo, we will be sending you all out some detailed information that contains our contact details and how you can book a one-on-one -on -one consult with experts at Macquarie. So if over the coming days or weeks, you feel like you have more questions, you feel like this is something you would like to explore in your future career, um, just go to the link in the email that we'll send you and it has all of that information there for you. So on behalf of Macquarie, we really do look forward to welcoming you to Macquarie in the coming years. Take care and we look forward to seeing you soon.